When it comes to new money versus old money, they say there are two sides of wealth. The first one is the haves together with the have-nots, and the second one, the have-had long before the haves had. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Welcome to another valuable Sunday motivational video, Aluxers. This one is particularly interesting as many of you are probably on your journey of climbing the social ladder. So we decided to break things down for you and make your ascend even smoother. You probably heard both terms before, but let's make sure everyone's on the same page. New money or nouveau riche are people who've built their wealth in the current generation. They're the first ones in their ancestral lineage to have money. Today, we have the tech billionaires, athletes, movie and TV stars, as well as anyone who got rich from a business they started. Old money are people whose families have been wealthy for generations. Think of the Gettys or the Vanderbilts in the US, the Rothschilds, the Vandels in France, the Agnelli in Italy, or any of the families mentioned in Crazy Rich Asians. With old money, you never got to meet your great-great-grandfather who started it all, and now your family is still enjoying the fruits of those efforts. But that's not the only thing that separates these two social classes. Here are 15 differences between new money and old money. Number 1. New money invests short-term, old money invests long-term. One of the fundamental differences has to do with their overview of the world. New money is all about now, old money is about forever. This is because now is the time when new money is hot, that's when there is a competitive advantage to cash in big. New money is playing the high-risk, high-return game. On the other side, old money doesn't care about rapid returns. They're in the turtle race, making sure the wealth grows sustainably throughout generations. Number 2. New money spends by trends, old money spends by tradition. When it comes to their spending habits, old money is pretty much set in stone. They have legacy brands, they have their traditions, they're already favorite hotels, resorts, automobile brands, and they stick with them. New money is bold and wild, it wants attention. They love trends, they're part of the conversation and the change that's happening in the world. Old money treasures tradition, they work with the same firms as the previous generations did, the kids go to the same schools where their name means legacy, and so on. If we were to bring it into today, new money is buying crypto, old money is holding on to more gold. Number 3. New money loves talking about money, old money rarely mentions it. This happens because for the new rich, money is exciting. They're amazed at how much you can do with money because it's fresh, they've never had it before now. For old wealth, money is almost taboo, actually they teach them young. Here are three golden rules of old money. 1. Don't tell anyone because they'll treat you differently. 2. Don't show that you have wealth. 3. Don't spend it. It's almost amusing the juxtaposition of being proud of being wealthy and also ashamed of having so much money you didn't earn. This has shaped the way old wealth positions itself in society. They want to play it safe, they have no intention of standing out. New money, on the other hand, can't scream it loudly enough. They buy the pink Ferrari, the oversized mansion, another pink Ferrari just because they like flamingos. They are shaped by the culture in which they grew up. You want to get a good whip, have the latest drip, have your eyebrows on fleek, okay, okay, we'll stop with the nonsense, but the argument is valid. We're all carrying the scars of poverty. Some of us just like to wear it like a badge of honor. Look, mama, I made it. Number 4. New money sits courtside, old money plays golf at the country club. Because they're shaped by the current generation, they find everything old antiquated. New Money didn't grow up playing polo or riding horses, but they watched Jordan score 69 points against the Cleveland Cavaliers. For them, that's history and they want to be a part of it in the making. But for old money, mainstream sports is too democratic, a bit too accessible to everyone. Formula One, tennis, polo, or gold at the country club have a barrier to entry. Not everyone can get in, and this is what they enjoy. It's like racism, but with money. Number 5. New money is always in a hurry, old money takes it slow. There's a big difference in attitude toward life between these two. New money lives in the age of speed. 
By the way, if you loved our integration of cars in this financial video, please hit the like button. It helps with the algorithm and we'll keep the memes coming. New Money has to-do lists and calendars. They go through them as quickly as possible so they can write down another achievement and post on social media about conquering the day. Old money happened yesterday and will happen tomorrow, but new money is happening now. Old money kicks back. They volunteer, do charity work, travel, host parties. We imagine shaking their heads in disbelief at the new generation while sipping their Chateau Latour. They're not in a hurry to get anywhere because they've already arrived. Number six, new money loves publicity. Old money hates it. If you've been subscribed to our channel for a while now, you might be familiar with the phrase, money talks, wealth whispers, and it's true. Truly wealthy people are very protective of their privacy. Here's something crazy we discovered firsthand a couple of years back that blew our minds. There are people who pay to be in Forbes magazine, and there are people who pay not to be in Forbes magazine. While new money is flaunting their wealth on Instagram and every tabloid in town, old money is actually spending money to remain anonymous and keep a low profile. Old money doesn't care what other people think, new money does. The family name means a lot and needs to be protected. In almost all traditional cultures, old money cares more about bringing shame to the family name above everything else, which is why paying for privacy or keeping your image clean has become a priority. We're living in the age of technology, and basically everything we do online is out there in the open. Your carrier is monitoring everything you do online. Social networks are building sophisticated avatars of what you like, what you don't like, and all of these can be used against you. The first step to claiming back your privacy is using a VPN while online. It's a super easy to use tool that with one click anonymizes your online activity so that prying eyes don't know who you are. Go to alux.com slash VPN right now and get one. NordVPN is the VPN we personally use, and they have an amazing offer to support our community and channel right now, where you're getting a 68% discount for three years worth of service. Buy it now and you're all set for the next three years. Number seven, new money is less snotty, but also less polished. When talking about old money, we're all probably picturing the same thing. Wait, is that Professor McGonagall? Okay, okay, calm down. We know it's from Downton Abbey. Put your Cheetos down. Old money gets taught etiquette, how to behave, what to wear, etc. All of this polishing can look like snobbery to the average person, but it all means well. New money didn't grow up with this kind of education. They're just figuring it out right now, or in some cases, they simply don't care about it at all. Number eight, new money entertains by dining out. Old money entertains at home. This is one of those basic differences in behavior. Unless you're going out to the single, one favorite restaurant where they order the same dish over and over again, you're unlikely to catch old money hosting outside of their home. New money, on the other hand, is running through every pop-up available, hashtag foodie. If you're celebrating new money, you best believe some bottles will be popped. If you've ever been to Vegas, San Tropez, or Mykonos, you know damn well that champagne showers are a real thing. Here's a standard champagne menu from a popular spot on Mykonos. The last one costs $140,000 for those of you in the States. There was a trend a while back where people were flexing on social media with how much money they spent on a night out, where spending over a quarter of a million dollars wasn't rare old money would be shook at the idea of spending that much on one night. Number nine, new money is open to new people. Old money is closed off. Despite having money, new money is a lot more relatable to the average person. They're literally living the dream most of us have to make it big despite our current circumstances, which is why they connect differently with people. They're not snobbish or shy away from normal things. Old money is scared that anyone new coming in could mess with the existing order of things to the point they're almost paranoid. This is why wealthy mothers still insist their sons or daughters marry into other wealthy families. Because of everything we've mentioned so far, old money is almost looking down on new money. Fundamentally, it's because of class systems people do not like to have their class integrated by people under them, or at least that's how some people perceive it. Number 10, new money thinks they can always make more. Old money is trying to make it last. 
new wealth is recent. They're in the game right now. They understand how money is flowing and they're dominating because life is predictable. Right now, they know what they're doing is working and they can see how the marketplace will change in the short and medium term. If new money is on the playing field, old money is just a spectator. Of course, even old money has some stake in the game. The financial advisors took care they have a diversified portfolio, but they're not getting the full return. But you see, this is not their game to win. They're playing a very different one. Their job is to make sure they don't screw everything up. Holding on to money for generations is quite a rare skill to learn and then pass on to each new generation. There's a very smart quote. We believe it's from George Pell, and it goes like this. Property in this country is drifting in the hands of those who can keep it and out of the hands of those who can merely acquire it. Right now, the largest transfer of wealth is happening from old hands to young ones who are leveraging technology to grow their fortunes. While this is happening, making sure you're holding onto the bag is something to be praised. One of the greatest international examples is Florence, Italy. The richest families in the late 1400s are still the richest families today. It's never too early or too late to begin crafting a plan so your grandchildren don't have to sell everything you've worked so hard to acquire. There are several good books on the subject, two that we recommend you pick up, Complete Family Wealth and Millionaire Next Door. For both, we'll leave the link in the description. If you're more into audiobooks though, go to alux.com slash free book right now. And if it's your first time signing up, you can get one of these two for free, thanks to our friends at Audible. Number 11. New money buys experiences. Old money buys things. We're living through a consumption revolution. A couple of decades ago, the goal was material. The more things you possessed, the wealthier you were perceived. Today, everyone can afford almost everything, so the folks in the marketing department needed something new. This is why all this philosophy of traveling the world and buying experiences instead of things has taken the world by storm. Traveling the world as a gift to yourself is something quite recent. In the time of Cleopatra, nobody would ever think of traveling to a new city or town for pleasure. There was no need for it. New money comes toward life with the attitude of, you can't take it with you when you die, while old money replies, but you can leave it to your children. New money takes pride in earning your wealth, and more recently they began to oppose the idea of leaving their fortunes to their children, which is why we see the richest people in the world vouching to donate the majority of their fortunes to charity upon their death. You can see the folks who joined Bill and Warren's Giving Pledge at givingpledge.org. From what we discovered in our research, this is something pretty unique to the West. It's unlikely to see something like this behavior in India or China. Number 12. Old money knows all the rules. New money doesn't care about the rules. Though proper etiquette requires a man to remove his hat when indoors, the nouveau riche men generally keep their hats on, especially if it's a cowboy hat. Also, nobody was wearing hats anymore, but apparently they're making a comeback. New money simply no longer cares about the theatricals of society. You no longer dress for status, which is why you have billionaires like Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, or Elon Musk wearing comfortable clothes instead of business suits. Old money loves rules because rules keep out the undesirables. Number 13. New money has specialized knowledge. Old money has general knowledge. This is because in order to get rich today, you need specialized knowledge. The new rich have an almost absolute understanding of a particular space or industry with very little knowledge outside of what is in their immediate interest. At the opposite pole, old money has an abundance of general knowledge because they've mastered the art of conversation. It's one of those things you get taught since you're young. One should be able to hold their end of a conversation with anyone on any subject. Number 14. There are many different types of new money, but more or less only one category of old money. Because of the linearity of time, everyone who's inherited money from old families has developed a familiarity in practice, behavior, and even wealth. Every fortune that lasted the test of time was structured fairly similarly. When it comes to new money, you have full chaos. You have the entertainment stars, like movie stars and singers, who hit it big and their lives revolve around their talent. You have the super athletes, who are technically entertainment as well, who've made it to the pinnacle of their career and are now cashing in big. You have the gamblers or lottery winners, who through sheer luck have entered this new social class. Then you have the entrepreneurs, 
who are building products and services that people love, and you can probably think of many more categories of new money. Everyone is getting richer by specializing in their own field and maximizing the number of people they can serve or entertain. Because they are so different and come from different industries, they're also quite different in behavior and values. Number 15. New money embraces change. Old money hates change. This last one is pretty straightforward. For old money, change means letting go of the comfortable, of the familiar, and diving into the unknown. And who knows if the unknown will be as rewarding as it has been in the past. That's exactly where new money thrives. Not only do they embrace change, they're the ones bringing it. Old hotel chains were the old money. Airbnb is the new money bringing the future into the present. Cable TV was the old thinking. Netflix and YouTube put them on their toes. How long do you think it'll take before eSports will overtake traditional sports? We're betting that within our generation, the transition from the old way of doing things to the new way will happen, which is why we're experimenting with a gaming channel here on YouTube, which you can subscribe to by going to alux.com slash zero deaths. We've met some people along the way who've come from old money, and in our experience, they were super nice, not snobbish, actually kinda chilled back. What we've identified, though, is they're missing the hunger of not having. They've got their own version, that of proving that they are more than their parents' inheritance, but it's not the same and you probably know what we're talking about. Which brings up the following question. Would you like your grandchildren to be old money or do you believe every generation should get their own? We're genuinely interested in hearing from you on this one in order to figure out where you, the Aluxers, fall on this issue. Please answer it in the comments. Now, for those of you still watching, here's a bonus you might find valuable. Becoming new money and then transitioning to old money. We're gonna give you a crash course that's meant to inspire your next moves. Ready? The most efficient way to become new money is to climb onto the newest technology available to the consumer. Every couple of years, new technology comes along. This is a tool that not many people adopt immediately. This will give you a massive competitive advantage. This is why we have multi-millionaire children on podcasts, TikTok, on crypto and streaming. In order to have the best chance of survival, be prepared to go all in and be consistent. It usually takes around five years for a new technology to mature. That's when you begin to cash in. And once you've got the money coming in, you need to be smart about it. Invest, do not spend. That's your new mantra. Apart from your basic survival, covering debt, and a minimal amount of comfort that allows you to keep doing what you're doing, you're gonna park everything in cash flow generating assets that increase in value over time. Think property, land, index funds, art, and stocks in your favorite companies. And if you really want the full list, we made a video called 15 Assets That Are Making People Rich, which you can check out by clicking in the top right corner. The goal is for you to acquire and lock down value for the future. If one day the pipe dries up and you need to adapt, you at least have this fortune to fall back onto. If you've made it this far into the video, and you believe you're a part of the new generation of entrepreneurs that's taking part in the current transfer of wealth, please write NM in the comments. That way we know we're talking to future billionaires. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question on our website, alux.com. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.